Hey guys, it's Sin Queen, and this is part 154 of the Decades Challenge. And as you can tell, I am not in our regular household. I'm actually playing as Sebastian Stan, which is Donna's newest boyfriend. They met, um, I think, like yesterday or the day before. They only recently met at a fan meet and greet, and it was love at first sight, like quite literally. Um, they are just head over heels into each other. They don't even fully know each other. Like he has two unknown traits for her, but their relationship could not be better. And I really wanted Sebastian to propose to Donna and it had to be somewhere really incredible. Um, so this is, I'll just try to back out here. This is crazy. I got this house on the gallery. Obviously I did not build this. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, and this is Sebastian's house. He lives here by himself and it's just so nice. Um, super like fancy and detailed. It's got a million bedrooms and a million staircases and a million floors. It's so nice. There's a maze in the backyard. Um, it's, it's like, it's a dream house. So this is where Sebastian is. He's up in the like, I don't know, the rich fancy area of Del Sol Valley. And he has this really nice view. And I just thought this was like the perfect place for him to propose to Donna. Um, I'm really hoping she's going to say yes because they don't know all of each other's traits. Maybe I'll just get that out of the way. Um, we just get to know. Oh my god, there's so many interactions. This is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I feel like if he gets to know her a little bit more, then there's no way she's going to say no. I mean, she didn't even say no to the nanny, so... I mean, this is really nothing surprising. Okay, so I found out that she is creative. Let's, I guess, blow a kiss. And then we're gonna, we're just gonna go for the propose. I'm a little nervous. Propose. I mean, the, the setting is perfect. They've got a nice view. Oh, I'm a little nervous for him. Now, unfortunately, I cannot get rid of the plum bob as much as I would like to. Um, it's just not going to happen. So I am going to try and get a good angle here for the photo because this is like, this is actually perfect. This setting, um, just kind of overlooking everything. I This may take a minute <laughs> to get the perfect photo. Um, that one's pretty good. I mean, I wanted to get more of Donna that, and not so much of him, but that's fine. Um, because this is her story after all. Okay, last one, I promise. All right, that, some, I'll find something. Oh, oh, oh. And of course she is saying yes. So this is now Donna's fourth fiance, I believe. Um, yes, fourth fiance. So we'll see how this goes. She just had such... Um, such an incredible life so far. Like, I, oh wow. I was hoping to get a picture of that, but it just didn't really work out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the plan has always been for Donna to eventually find somebody. So, I mean, this could be it. All right, so these two are officially engaged and completely in love. And I think I will now switch back over to Donna's household. Okay, so these two are, we're not gonna wait very long to get married. I mean, they certainly didn't wait long to get engaged. So I planned the wedding for the next day and we are here at the Newcrest Chapel. Um, I chose this place because other couples from the challenge have gotten married here. Um, you may remember, I think it was Charlotte and, was his name Teddy? Oh no, it wasn't Teddy, I don't remember. The couple from the 50s, I should know. Um, but I really don't. They got married at this chapel though. They had their wedding pictures in front of this car and I think there was another couple but I can't remember for sure. Um, Either way, this is a really nice chapel and I thought it'd be fun for them to get married here, assuming that she actually does um, go through with it this time. So this is her fourth engagement, her third wedding, and we're going to see how this goes. I feel like the kids at this point, they're, they're here, but they don't really expect anything to happen. Um, and that would not be all that surprising. Oh, he has to go to the washroom very badly. Okay, go to the bathroom before this whole thing starts. I mean, I don't think he would care that much if he missed the wedding, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's just get the kids like to, to come up here. And we're probably gonna get this going pretty soon. Um, Christopher, once he's done in the washroom, he can come wait over here. We've got everyone at the wedding too. We invited all of our guests. Um, a lot of them have aged. 
I did invite two of her ex-boyfriends who are now actually um, elders, so that really didn't take long. Um, let's just get married to Sebastian and see, see if she's actually going to go through with it this time. Um, because the first time she left Scott, the second time um, Stephen left her at the altar, the third time her fiancé died, and now here we are going for a fourth. So let's see how this goes. Where is Sebastian? Okay, he's actually showing up, so that's good. Oh, no, he's not. But what are you doing? What is he? He is making such a production of this. He is just equally as much of a diva as she is. I love that. All right, we're finally doing this. Hold on, I want to see if people are actually watching. Not really. At the, oh, there's Freddie Bales. That's the father of the twins. He is so old. <laughs> and then here is Steven, fiance number two. He's here too. There, this, this is fun. This is a good time. Not at all the recipe for a complete disaster of a wedding. I do want to get a decent picture of these two. There we go, okay. Oh, I keep trying to get the perfect picture and then the perfect picture comes up and I need to get it again. There we go, that should be it. And how old is she, by the way? She's almost an elder. She's 12 days away from being an elder, so she's getting pretty old. All right, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Sometimes these take a long time. What is happening? Like, they're just staring at each other awkwardly. Oh, what has happened? Oh, there we go. We're good. They needed a minute. Um, these two, I mean, they would make such a production and drag out this whole thing just to have their eyes, <laughs> just have people's eyes on them. There we go. So these two did actually get married. That is Donna's first marriage. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, they are officially married. So, I mean, I didn't hire like a caterer or a bartender or anything like that. So, I mean, I don't really know what we're going to do. We can hang out this lot for a bit longer. Um, let's go back here. See, there's no... There is a bar, which is nice, but again, nobody's actually tending the bar. Um, but that is not stopping Donna. She still wants a drink. Um, I mean, she is here to party after all. You may have noticed that I did actually give her a haircut. I just was getting kind of sick of the really long hair, so I cut it a little bit shorter, and I think it looks pretty good. Is he flirting with this girl? I'm not sure. I don't think so. And that, that's Kelly Winters. That is Donna's sister i believe and of course the paparazzi are here watching her make drinks at her wedding which is nothing surprising at all how are the kids doing i feel like i haven't checked on them in a long time why is he so unhappy stinky diaper from being near a toddler that's because nobody takes care of this child um change diaper i don't know what else to do There we go. Change him, please. Like the, he's obviously very uncomfortable, even just being around him. All right. So I mean, their wedding has been a success so far. I think I'm just gonna cancel the event. There's not much else going on. I've said this a million times. I am so bored with weddings. Um, they just, we really need an update. They're not. They're just not good. <laughs> And of course, he knows how to play the piano. That's not surprising at all. I think this is a pretty successful event. So now the next thing is the living situation. So you might be wondering, so, I mean, is Sebastian going to leave his big mansion to come live in our little 70s house? Um, and the answer is no. There's no way he's going to leave his mansion. And Donna... I mean, there's no way she's just not going to live in that house when her husband lives there. So I'm thinking what we're going to do. Actually, I'm not just thinking it. What we are going to do, <laughs> what's going to happen is Donna is going to move in with Sebastian and leave her children. 
because that is exactly something that she would do. Um, she's always been a mean sim. She hasn't been a very good mother. And yeah, I think she's just going to walk away from her kids and leave them in the house. I mean, they are five days away from becoming young adults. So, I, oh no, four days. So they're getting there. They're, it's, I mean, they're going to be young adults fairly soon. Um, I, and she's definitely going to leave Heather as well. She doesn't want much to do with her. As for Floyd, I'm not sure if she should take Floyd with her or, or I don't know, just leave him with the teens. I haven't quite decided, but basically we are going to be saying goodbye to Donna because it's just about time to move on and carry out the story with the next generation. We've had a lot of fun with Donna, but this is how I wanted to end her story. I don't know if she deserves a happy ever after, to be perfectly honest. Um, she's not the nicest sim, but that's that's what's happened. She She's getting her happily ever after. She's going to go live in this fancy house with her millionaire husband and, yeah, carry out the best years of her life. So that's that. Oh, more cellos here, too. That's so awkward. Um, so yeah, that's, we're pretty much wrapping up Donna's story, and I'm sorry if that comes as a big surprise. Um, I have been planning this for a little while because I do want to carry on and focus more on Christopher and Rebecca. The thing with Donna is she is such a huge character and such an icon that we spend so much time with her and so much focus on her, and there's not much more of a story to tell here. So we're going to have her move in with Sebastian. Haven't decided if she's going to leave all the kids behind or just the teens. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but yeah, we are uh, officially saying goodbye to Donna in this episode. Okay, so we are back at the um, house, and for some reason, Christopher is wearing a bathing suit. I don't know why. They recently got back from the wedding, and this is what he's wearing. Um, I love that his cats came out to greet him. I think that's so cute. Um, so... You may notice that our household is significantly smaller than it was uh, just a few minutes ago. So what we have done is moved Donna into um, Sebastian's household. Obviously, she was going to live with her husband. Um, he's got a ton of money. So yeah, she left. <laughs> she literally left her children and moved in with her new husband. So I mean, for Donna, that is a happy ending. I think that that's kind of what we're all expecting from her. Um, I'm glad that I can sort of end her story on a positive note, at least for her. Um, never mind her family, but she is literally living her dream. And in true Donna fashion, she actually emptied out the bank account. There was a lot of money in there, I think. Um, I don't remember how much, but a couple hundred thousand, I believe. And she took it all with her, even though they didn't need it. Um, Sebastian is literally a millionaire, but Donna emptied the bank account, left the kids here. Um, so now it's Christopher, Rebecca, and Heather. So what I actually did is I, I toyed with the idea of having Floyd um, either live with Donna and her new husband or go and live with his dad, who really truly wanted to take care of him and was denied custody. So um, what I ended up doing is I thought, you know, Donna wouldn't want a toddler cramping her style in her new mansion. Like she's trying to have a fresh start, get away from these kids. So we, I actually ended up leaving Floyd here and then Rebecca and um, Christopher turned him over to his dad. So Floyd doesn't live here anymore. He lives with his dad. I will still try to have him part of the story and we'll still try to include him and invite him over. We haven't seen the last of him, um, but I think the household will be easier to manage if it's just the three kids. Um, Heather still lives here. Um, I transformed this bedroom here into a bedroom for her. We didn't have a ton of money to do that because obviously Donna left them with nothing, but I emptied out her old bedroom, moved the butler's stuff into her old bedroom, and now she has just a, a nicer, bigger bedroom with more stuff to do. So that is where we're at. Um, as for actually keeping the butler, I don't think we can afford to do that. We don't have the money for it. Um, the kids are all still in school. And as much as I really like him, it's just, it's become too much. We can't do it anymore. So we have to actually um, fire him, which is unfortunate because I think that they've grown attached to having a butler. Now they have to get used to doing things for themselves. So he's not going to work for us anymore. And I wish it didn't have to be a negative thing. I mean, Rebecca's not trying to be mean, but... 
I can't take it anymore. I quit. Never have I been in the service of such a boorish and downright hostile employer. If you care to hire another butler, you may call the Windenburg Butlering Academy, but I'd suggest... Oh, I wanted to read that. You work on your demeanor first. Oh, and by the way, I'm helping myself to a severance package on my way out. Read our contract. It's included in the fine print. So, I mean, he would have probably tried to take some money, but I don't think we would have had any for him to take. Um, I, I do wish that it didn't have to be a negative interaction, but... Actually, you know what? Let's not eat this. Let's make some more food. Where's the garbage? I swear we had a garbage can right there. All right. Um, that's a little bit weird. I'm just going to get her to serve. Um, oh, we can't even serve food because we have no money. This is kind of depressing. I'm going to get her to sell a couple of her school projects, and that will give us a little bit of money. Um, then we can serve up some vegetable dumplings. Um, I'm not sure if there's much else Rebecca can cook. Um, so yeah, it's Rebecca and Chris now raising Heather. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult to do. Heather is only, oh, five days away from being a teenager. And then Chris and Rebecca are four days away from being young adults. So um, I still haven't really decided what's going to happen in terms of who's going to take over for the 80s for the next generation. Um, I mean, I have definitely developed... Um, more of an interest, I guess, in Rebecca. So I was kind of hoping I could um, do the story with Rebecca. Um, but I'm picturing for her, oh, now this broke. They're going to have some struggles. we got to try to repair that. I don't think Chris has ever repaired anything in his life. Normally we would just hire someone to do it, but not this time. Um, oh, did she already grab herself some food? Oh, she was going to. Just wait for the dumplings. Like, you kids are so <laughs> impatient. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if we're going to stay in this house or maybe move into a different one. I really, I dig the 80s a lot. It looked like a good time. I mean, I was late. I was born in 1992, so I didn't get to experience, experience it at all. But I've always been fascinated by the 80s. It looked like a great time. I love 80s music. So I'm excited for this one, and I really want to make sure that I'm choosing an era that I'm excited about. So I may go with Rebecca in that case. And Christopher, I'm thinking, could just go to Evergreen Harbor and live out his own dream there. At least that's what I'm hoping for. How long is this food going to take? These three are struggling. Like, they really are. Everyone's hungry. I'm waiting on these dumplings, which I feel like are never going to come out. There we go. Oh, boy. <clears throat> this is going to be tough. All right. So everybody grab some of this food. Chris managed to actually um, fix the the fridge, which is kind of amazing. I did not expect that at all. I'm just going to buy a new trash can here while I try to figure things out. I'm going to get the orange one. Because we're still in the 70s. We may be getting close to the 80s, but this one I think is perfect. All right, what's going on here? Is everyone going to eat? Good. I'm going to put this in the fridge. Um, so, yeah, I think what... I may do, what I'm thinking for Rebecca is that she used to want to be, oh, she's going to eat on the side of the pool here. Um, I think Rebecca used to, she wanted to be a musician like her mom. And um, I mean, she definitely worked hard towards that goal. She's level 10 in the piano skill. And I think she always dreamed of being, being a musician. Um, fame, I mean, not so much. I think she mostly just wanted to do what she loved. Um, but now she is seeing that how much fame has destroyed her family, um, how much it destroyed her relationship with her mom and what kind of person it turned her mother into. Um, I mean, Deborah is like this money hungry, I mean, legend, honestly, but super greedy, really mean. She would step on anyone's neck to get ahead, even her own children. So I think now Rebecca is starting to see the negative sides of the music industry and is maybe going to want nothing to do with that. So I'm thinking for her story, we're going to move her as far away from Del Sol Valley as she can get into a little suburban, um, I guess, town where she can start her life fresh and not have to, and stay away from the music industry entirely. Maybe never even touch the piano again. I think that that would be a really good story for her, but you guys let me know what you think. Um, I think she just wants something super normal. She wants a suburban lifestyle. She wants... Um, just like a, a nice little house, nothing fancy at all. She wants a husband and a family. Um, I don't think she wants any of this fame and she wants to get away from this industry entirely. So that's really what I'm feeling for Rebecca. She saw how much it wrecked her mom and now she, oh, 
you were headed to the right bed there. Um, and now she wants nothing to do with it. So I think that'd be really fun. Um, for Christopher, I mean, he could just move to Evergreen Harbor. I don't know what's going to happen with Heather. She could either go with Rebecca or go with Christopher. Um, a lot of you guys said that I should keep Rebecca and Christopher together, which I didn't mind that idea, but I'm starting to think now that I don't want them to be together forever. I'm thinking they'll go their separate ways. Um, I have to get Chris up because he has a bladder infection, I believe. Then he has to go back to bed. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. But I really am leaning more towards Rebecca. And I know a couple of you guys were saying that I should explore Chris's story. Um, and as much as I want to do what you guys want me to do, I still have to sort of follow what interests me. Otherwise, I'm not going to be into the storyline. And I really want to make sure that I am. So, so far, that is what I'm leaning towards. Um, so I'm going to get Rebecca up. I guess they still have to go to school and um live their lives as normally as possible even though they're basically abandoned children um their mom has quite literally abandoned them um, i'm gonna get her to take a shower and then heather um i mean she could just get up and get ready for school oh she's feeling angry oh she's erratic i totally forgot that she had that trait um erratic and oh she's going through the picky eater phase yeah she's a handful that's for sure you know what, just go get ready for school because honestly, the bathroom is never gonna be, be available so they can all just leave. Um, but yeah, soon I will be giving, I, like, I still love the 70s. I'm a little obsessed with it, it was a lot of fun, but soon I'll be giving Rebecca her 80s makeover. It has been really hard to find 80s CC, so I'm gonna try to do it with as much stuff we have in game as possible. Um, I have found like one 80s hairstyle and like that's pretty much it. Other than that, I'm having a hard time, so. I'm going to get them to... Actually, they can just make friends at school today. They've had a rough weekend, um, but they're doing okay. I like that you can have teens by themselves in a household. Um, I mean, you can't move them into a household by themselves, but you can have the parents leave, and then they're just on their own, which I really like. I think it's fun for, for storytelling. Um, also, our bills just came in the mail, and it's probably a lot more than what we can afford. Um... How much do they want? 949 simoleons. We definitely don't have that, but um, I mean, should we get one of them to work part-time? You know what? I think Christopher needs a part-time job, I would say. So maybe I'll get him to get a job. Um, and I mean, we can look around and see that we don't need a lot of the stuff that this house has, but I'm going to try to sell things like the sauna. It's probably worth quite a bit and we don't need it. It's a luxury item. That's for sure. Um, but I don't really want to sell things in our house. That wouldn't have been the most realistic way to make money. Um, just sell parts of your home. I don't think I want to do that. I kind of prefer the way, um, the method of them struggling. Um, sure. Invite over Melody, I guess. Who's calling? Oh, the principal, because their grades aren't good. And it's going to get worse because now Chris needs a job. Um, find a job. Um, and Rebecca too, I mean, she could work, she could busk though with the piano. I think she would probably make good tips if she were to do that. The kids are struggling in school. That is not surprising. Um, that appears to be Melody Ruffin, um, the friend that Rebecca invited over. I'm going to get her to go watch some TV for a bit. Chris, did we get you a job yet? Hold on. What's going on here? Uh, we just want something part-time. So he could be a fast food employee. I think we'll do that. So his hours, oh, his grades are so bad. Um, his hours, he's a fry cook. He works Tuesday to Saturday, five to nine. So that should be doable. Um, I'll just get him to come over here and just watch some TV for a little bit. Um, university, I don't think that's gonna happen for us. Um, I don't know, I'm just not too interested in going to university with Rebecca or Christopher really, so. I don't think that I'll do that, but I will get Heather to come and play dolls for a little bit. I feel like this household is just a lot more relaxing now that Deborah's gone. As much as I loved her, um, and I just loved playing with her, I love her story. Um, I'm enjoying this little, this little change. It's just much calmer. Um, I'm gonna get Rebecca to serve some dinner. I want her to get better at cooking, so I'm gonna get her to keep doing it. And then Chris. You gotta try to get your grades up. Oh, and we need to um, pay those bills. I mean, I have these school projects. I will sell that. I'd rather sell things in their inventory than things in their house, if I can. 
So that right there made us 400. And then we have a couple more in here. Let's face it, they're never actually going to do these school projects. Um, oh, I don't like that number. Our household funds, I'm not a fan. Let's sell one more thing. Can I sell this? There we go. We can almost afford, what can we sell? There we go. Now we'll be able to afford the bills. That's really sad. They had to pretty much empty the contents of their uh, household or their in personal inventories just to be able to afford their bills. Um, and it's funny because Deborah definitely could have left them some money. She did not need to take all that money. She didn't have to take any of it really. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, so I guess the house would now be Rebecca that she could sell it if she wanted to and then use that money for a different house, which I think we'll probably do. Okay, you should go grab some food. Um, it doesn't look like Rebecca did such a good job um, making food, but she really tried. So I'll accept that. Let's put this away. Oh, this trash has been sitting here for a while. Okay, you need to like reset. Thank you very much. There's a lot of like, there's cat fur, there's random things on the floor. And then she's eating some food. I should probably get Heather to do homework as well. Um, she has a couple of school projects, so I could sell those if we needed to. Uh, let's get Rebecca to go pay some bills. This is very, very grown up for her to have to go and worry about paying bills. Oh, Donna's calling? Donna Winters would like to come over to hang out. Is that okay? I mean, would we really want that? Hmm. Um... I mean, I guess she can come over. She can watch us pay the bills that we could barely afford because she left us with nothing. Um, I don't know, like, she's got a lot of nerve coming over here, but I also think that they would still have a bit of a relationship. It is their mom, and I mean, they weren't entitled to that money that she took, but still, I mean, she is just cold. But I'm glad she came to visit. Um, I still want ha want to have her around. I, st I still love Donna, she's great. Ask for a selfie. But yeah, let's just feed her ego even more. Uh, <laughs> See, she, I think that these two just have such a complex relationship. And I, I really think that Donna would be coming over to make sure that Rebecca is still playing her instruments and still pursuing music uh, because she really wants Rebecca to follow in her footsteps. Oh. <laughs> Her mom just said no to an autograph. That is very awkward. Um, let's go practice on the keyboards for a bit. He went to bed. Heather is doing her homework in the bathroom, it looks like. But that's good. At least she's doing it. Um, and then her mom is here. Let's go over here and be mean to her. Let's go and mock her outfit. Heather has an attitude, that's for sure. And I wonder where she got that from. Mouse we'll also call her names. Oh, wow. And the thing with these two is that they both have, like, equal amounts of sass, so they can just go on forever. Okay, Rebecca's still playing the keyboards, I think. Yeah, it's just getting her fun to go up a little bit. Um, I should also get her to focus on some homework as well. Let's get her to do her homework, because her grades are just really bad. Where did Donna go? Is she actually cleaning up? What is going on? Is this her way of being like, here, I'll help out around the house since I abandoned you here? Oh, no. She couldn't fully commit to doing it. Um, she had to just put the plates down and leave. <laughs> she was unable to actually help and contribute to the household. Um, so yeah, Rebecca's going to do her homework. Hopefully we can get those grades to go up. But I'm going to leave this episode right here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.